Hi guys, in this video I'm going to teach you about the five main differences between audiologists and hearing instrument specialists. Coming up! Dr. Cliff Olson from Applied Hearing Solutions and on this channel I cover all things hearing related to make you better informed about hearing loss and your treatment options. So you walk into a hearing aid clinic and you meet a guy in a white lab coat. You see all the certifications on the wall, so you ask him, where did you go to school? And he's like, what do you mean where did I go to school? And you're like, you know, to become a doctor. And he's like, oh, hold on, no, I'm not a doctor, I'm a hearing instrument specialist. Now it's not your fault for thinking he's a doctor. The white lab coat can be a little misleading. And he still may be completely capable of providing you with excellent hearing health care, but there are some major differences between audiologists and hearing instrument specialists that you should know about. So let me give you some background. Back in the 1960s, 1970s, audiologists were prohibited from dispensing hearing aids by their professional service organizations. Uh, for instance, ASHA. What would happen is an audiologist would essentially do the hearing test and make the recommendation of a hearing aid and then they would refer them to a hearing instrument specialist to complete the fitting. It was also during that time that audiologists were seeking to expand their scope of practice to include education, auditory rehabilitation, and research. Hearing instrument specialists were also seeking to certify and protect their well-established positions of retail businessmen. Basically a battle ensued between the two professions, something that I'm not necessarily proud about, but may have been necessary for the growth of both professions. Ultimately, it resulted in audiologists and hearing instrument specialists being able to fit patients with hearing aids. Now before I get into the differences between audiologists and hearing instrument specialists, it's important that you know that I think that both of them are necessary to treat this massive population growth that we have of individuals with hearing loss. Okay, so we got that out of the way. Now that you know the history of audiologists and hearing instrument specialists, we can now move on to the differences. Difference number one is education. Education may very well be the largest difference between an audiologist and a hearing instrument specialist. Audiologists are now required to earn a doctorate, which means eight additional years of education beyond a high school diploma. The best programs are very selective and competitive to incoming students, and the programs are very rigorous and require a full understanding of hearing health care in order to pass the program. Hearing instrument specialists can be required to complete up to a two-year associate's degree depending on the state that they want to practice in, and that degree doesn't necessarily have to be in hearing instrument sciences, but it can be. Difference number two is education requirements. Both professions are required to complete an exam to become licensed in a particular state. Audiologists are required to pass the Praxis exam, which encompasses all areas of audiology from uh, diagnostic testing to cochlear implants to auditory rehabilitation to pediatrics to you name it, it covers it all. It's intended to ensure that an audiologist understands all aspects of hearing healthcare. Hearing instrument specialists must also pass a state exam, which includes hearing aid testing, fitting, and ear mold impressions, and it's for the sole purpose of fitting hearing aids. Okay, difference number three is clinical practice. The required amount of time spent in supervised clinical practice can be vastly different between audiologists and hearing instrument specialists. Most audiology programs who are ASHA accredited require over 2,000 hours of supervised clinical experience under a, a seasoned audiologist. Many students will exceed this number and some students receive the bare minimum. Hearing instrument specialists generally have to practice under another hearing instrument specialist if they're on a temporary license. If they're on a permanent license, uh, it depends on the state, but most of them do not require that they have any supervision at that time. Difference number four is research. This is another really big difference between the two. Research essentially determines what the best practices are in the hearing industry. Hearing healthcare is constantly changing because of new discoveries and rapidly changing technology. Being able to determine what is good research can dictate what is taken and put into clinical practice. Audiologists are generally required to complete a capstone project during their time in school. 
what this is is it's a research project that they develop from beginning to end to really give them a complete understanding of how research works and what dictates whether or not research is valid and good or not good and therefore what you should take and incorporate into clinical practice. Hearing instrument specialists may be required to read some research if they attended uh, an associate's degree program, uh, but there is no requirement for them to conduct any kind of research during that program. Difference number five, certification. Essentially any certification that's obtained by an audiologist or hearing instrument specialist is done at their own free will and it is showing their patients that they're upholding that certification board's standards for ethics and care. Audiologists have the ability to join a variety of different certifying associations, uh, a couple of them being uh, ASHA, which is the American Speech Language Hearing Association, also the American Board of Audiology, also the Academy of Doctors of Audiology, uh, so on and so forth. There's also state boards that you can essentially uh, be a part of as well. Each of these associations has their own code of ethics, their own continuing education requirements for you to maintain certification with those associations. Hearing instrument specialists have the opportunity to take an exam or attend a particular program, which there's a, several of them, in order to become board certified as a hearing instrument specialist. This is why you commonly see the letters BCHIS for board certified hearing instrument specialists. Based on information from the NBC website, the certification essentially shows to consumers that that instrument specialist is upholding a higher level of education and competency. So these five differences aside, you have some great audiologists and then you have some not so great audiologists and you have some great hearing instrument specialists and you have some not so great hearing instrument specialists. The important thing though is that you are informed about the differences between the two so you can make a decision on who you want to go see to, uh, and to entrust your hearing health care with. If you would like to know more about your state's licensing requirements for audiologists and hearing instrument specialists, you can go to your state licensure board website to find that information out. It is free to access. That's it for today's video. If you have any questions or comments, leave them in the comment section below. If you like the video, feel free to give it a thumbs up. And if you want to, go ahead and subscribe. I'll see you next time.